Today we're here with Brian Omer from Stonecutters, Louisville-based uh, sludge metal fucking badass Thrash. band. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just badass. Do our thing. Thank For you. Sure. Uh let's let's start off with Eye of the Skull. What a yep. fucking killer album this is. Thank look you, at, John. Look at that fucking awesome artwork. Yeah, Tim Lehigh, my my tattoo artist, did that. He did my back piece and he's done stuff for test or his tattoo testament and and uh, we did a high on fire album cover and um uh, great great artist i don't know i think he did a big painting that's a big painting he did for me so okay. uh, yeah i asked him to do it and he made time for me to to do a big painting and all for it. i'm pretty stoked on it yeah that's cool as shit yeah so uh i have the skull when did you start writing up for it <sighs> Man, during during the pandemic or the the lockdown stuff, um, I got with drummer Johnny, who's played on just about all the Stonecutter stuff uh, albums, and um, we just started. Um, I had the riffs and started putting it together, and and um, I was like, "This is Stonecutters. We're doing this," and um, turned out powerful. I think I'm stoked on it. Yeah, I think doing so the too. death cover and all, and and uh planet chaos on there that's a song that him and i wrote when we were kids it's like a 30 year old song showing my age here but um it's like coming Johnny, coming full circle right i mean full circle is like this is we had recorded it like 30 years ago we just kind of decided to record it again and and beefed it up put some solos in it and a sample and and uh yeah i was stoked on the whole thing oh Turned yeah it's it's fun. I think it, it sounds really good. Opens with scowlers. Oh, you know. Right. What a good you got fucking the little sing along strong. right there. Yeah. Right there from the start. Yeah, I won the good powerful song first. And um yes. search for rest. One of us is a, a tribute to the movie Freaks, the the old Todd Browning black and white movie. Um uh, which I kind of killed Todd Browning's career. He's a Louisville native guy, and he did Dracula, London After Midnight, and a bunch of bunch of classics. And then Freaks kind of freaked the Hollywood out. And um, but now now people look back as 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 a great movie. But I don't know. Yeah, the solos and all on that song and the album. I'm I'm really happy with Chris, our guitar player, um, recording. Uh, did you? I think you muted. Sorry. Yep. There you. I'm new to it. Got a got a call there for a second, but um, actually my first Zoom meeting in a while. So yeah, back I at it. it. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, so how long has I have the skull been out? It just came out in like what October, September. November. Okay. September. Uh, we did the release show. Well, that's when the um headliners release show and then the vinyl actually this saturday will be like the vinyl release um we're releasing both records we've got the seven inch can i show the seven inch yes there's the seven inch and then the records just came in like last month so we're gonna um the full length record you just showed so we're gonna release both saturday night at mag bar right on do a big be, release yeah that'll be a good show i remember the eye of the skull release was you guys she who else was and on that sinistrum that's it sinistrum um opened that, that was that was an awesome show yeah this one's got bat wizard who were obviously on the seven inch with us and um sadistic creator they're kind of younger kids great like thrashy death metal cool fast stuff it's I'm not, good. I'm not seen them. Obviously, I've seen Bat Wizard a few times. Love Vic, Adam, right? The whole crew. Yeah. Uh, me too. I think I think I'll have Adam on. I got it on the schedule somewhere. I don't even know when. Uh huh. Uh, good. Good. Yeah. I, I reached out to Vic. Was like, "Hey, dude, you want to be on?" I haven't heard back from him. I'm like, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. Yeah, I'll hit him up again today. I just hit him up. I think yesterday. 
Really? Yep. Uh, so shows that Wait. at Magbar, it's all ages, right? It's all ages. Um, yeah. This Saturday, it looks like we're gonna have a good turnout. Um, we've we've sold Magbar out pretty much every time we played there, so I think it's gonna be another. It looks like it's gonna be another banger here. Yeah, well, I think it will. All- be. I've, I was talking to my daughter, her boyfriend, and his brother, and I think they're planning on coming to the show too. Awesome! It's gonna be a packed deal here. Yeah. I feel. Yeah, I do too. I'm always think... stoked on that. N- neither one of us play out a lot locally, Bat Wizard or Stonecutters. So, right. Um, we try to make it an event when we play local. So. Yeah. And it's always a good time, right? A lot of familiar faces coming in and everyone just kind of hanging out, talking and what have you. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good times. We try yeah. to make our shows are always fun. For sure. Even so, though our music's dark and dreary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I, I just had a conversation with another guy, right? Like metalheads are typically happier people than people who listen to all the other styles of music, which is maybe it's because we get our aggression out or whatever. Yeah. It's a little therapeutic to, for us, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it. you've got the show Saturday. Um, what uh, what other shows do you have coming up? Um, we're going to play this fest in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, it's a weird name called Oig's Fest. And uh, we played it before. It's gone on for a few years now. Every It's usually in Lansing. It's the guys from Cavalcade mm-hmm. put it on. And um, I heard they have Centenary this year, which I love Centenary. Cool. Our plan, Drink Their Blood, Cavalcade, um, and a bunch of other like awesome heavy heavy bands that's april 6th and um we're work i think we're gonna play chicago the night before i don't have all the details yet and um we've got a show in lexington march 30th so yeah we're working out some stuff we're playing green lantern in lexington on the 30th okay and um that'd be a fun yeah crowd there yeah that so, place it's been a while. i've been to yeah i haven't been there in probably a year or two and it, I feel like it's been it, a while for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a neat little spot. So we'll, we'll go down and hit that. And um, I don't know. We're going to make a few things happen, happen right this on. year. So Cavalcade, um, Craig Horky, right? Yes. Uh, Craig does. Um, he did the artwork for the seven inch and um, he's done our album covers for Carved in Time and Blood Moon and a bunch of t shirts and posters for us. And, um, we love his art as well. Yeah, me too. I uh, I was trying to think. I was at a festival in Michigan. Uh, it doesn't happen anymore. It was called Bled Fest. Mm-hmm. They had it in uh, Heartland Community Center, and they had like five or six stages set up. And they had in like the gymnasium was just a it was a vendor like fair in there. So I was in there the last time I was at Blood Fest. I think Black Dahlia Murder headlined. Uh, Fallujah was there. Battle Cross. Uh, I don't know. A lot of really, really good fucking bands. And uh, I'm checking out the vendor fair. I met, I met Craig. I was digging his art. Uh, I think he had a Melvin's poster that I was like, oh, that's that's freaking cool. So we get talking, and he, and I was like, oh yeah, like I'm I live in Louisville. He goes. Oh, I know some people in Louisville. I go, who? He goes, Brian Omer. I'm like, I fucking know Brian. Like, that's cool. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Craig's kind of my boy. He's awesome. Yeah. He's uh I he's, think I've I've got some of his posters hanging up around here somewhere. Yeah, he does great, great work. Yeah, he's got a he's got a really unique style that I like a fucking lot. He does. It's very poppy. It looks great on like shirts and, and album covers. His stuff is is strong i like it for sure um so eye of the skull that i assume first pressing of that will probably sell out pretty quick huh um man we have gone through about half of it already um cd sorry i'm trying to push my dog into his kennel here get him to cooperate (laughs) um Man, the the CDs have almost sold out. Nice, and the the vinyl. Um, 
man, we had like 40 or 50 pre-orders. So, so it's moving, it's moving really good, actually. Hell yeah. Uh, I didn't make like a whole lot. Like I kind of, I put it out of my own label, which I put out all the stone cutters albums, pretty much on my own label time is truth. And I didn't get too, too crazy with it, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's actually selling really good. And, um, I think the the artwork and the album itself, I don't know. I feel like it's good, so proud of it. And um, ten songs on the physical product, where there's only eight on the on the streaming platforms, and all. Saved a couple bonus tracks for the physical. That's a good way but, to um, push push people to buy buy more physical yeah, too. Exactly, it's and you like, get the whole awesome layout and stuff. And, the cassette and CD turned out beautiful too. The CD has a big poster in it, and cassette has like a four panel fold out deal. And oh, yeah. uh, it's all got the Tim Lee High artwork in it. So, yeah. I was, t- I was talking to uh, Chris Prevellis from Internal Bleeding last night. Really? And, yeah. And we were uh, talking about, you know, what it was like back in the day. You know, you're, you're like our age, you know. So, yeah. Chris and I actually go back a long way. We played um, this fest, this Dayton, Ohio metal fest. My old band, My Own Victim, Internal Bleeding, and Dying Fetus. Oh, right on. And this was like 92. Wow. So I've known him since um, since about I graduated from high school. <laughs> since about the time that Internal Bleeding started, because they started in 91. Yeah, yeah, and, and My Own Victim had just... Um, put out we had just signed to century media i believe or about to and you know that's what i hell i put out four albums on century media with that band and i uh, met chris early on and my own victim ended up putting out um eight eight albums i think i have to think about it yeah six eight and then um yeah i've known chris and dying fetus for that one it's kind of Kind of crazy. We both started out about the same time. Yeah. All of us. You know, it's 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 nice for those guys. It seems like internal bleeding is starting to get a lot more uh you know, a lot more notoriety in current times. Yeah. They had a different singer back then, I remember. They've kind of changed singers a few times, I believe. Yeah. Um I, I but think... um he, he's kept it going as internal bleeding this whole time and the slamming riffs, yeah. For sure. I know those dudes. They've yeah. got a pretty solid lineup right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, trying to get them. I think they're uh they're playing Milwaukee Metal Fest this year. We were talking about he's gonna they're gonna, you know, hit a few dates out to Metal Fest and back home. And one of the couple of those dates are like Cleveland and Detroit. And I'm like, well shit, I'm probably gonna have to make that trip, come up, hang out, drink yeah. some bourbon. Right. You know, it's a good time. Hell yeah. So if you want to make a trip to Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be cool. Hell yeah. Um, let's see what uh, over the next like year, what does uh, Stonecutters have kind of in the pipeline aside from a couple of shows? Um, Man, I tell you what, I mean, we, we you know, we did do this interview before. I'm kind of telling everybody, yes, but uh, <laughs> something <laughs> happened to it. And I'd mentioned before, that um, that I don't know. Like, like I feel like Danny Lilker. We were talking about Danny Lilker from Nuclear Assault, SOD, mm-hmm. um, original Anthrax bass player. Um, I mentioned this in my Metal Forge interview that he hit fifty, and um, he quit touring. So I'm going to be fifty this year, and I'm kind of feeling that. You know, I don't want to say never, say never, because um, I would take a good tour opportunity, but I definitely like got a little tired of living in a van you know um it gets a little rough out there especially for a band like like stone cutters it's it's hard to um to tour so much and you know we went out to california three or four times five maybe and and new york four or five we kind of hit back and forth and and um you know the older i get i just realized i just like making music you know yeah. And um, I don't have to kill myself doing it. And um, I don't know. We're we're playing shows and we're doing it. And I want to get out there. And 
But um, I, I also realize I'm not a young kid anymore, you know. And I commend in, Internal Bleeding and Chris and all these bands for hitting it so hard, you know. I, I wish I could, but, you know, we're DIY. And um, we played some amazing tours and shows. We went out with Guar for a little while, Goat Whore. Um, did maybe four, four or five shows with Goat Whore. Um, Demolition Hammer, we did a did a, few, a couple of few shows with them and Macabre. And, um, you know, I would do it again. But um, I definitely feel like I'm I'm not going to stress myself out and kill myself trying to sure. play play so many. You know, I'm getting all the, the whites and grays are coming in. I'm getting older. and But I do feel like I want to uh, probably do another record after this one. We're kind of starting to starting to ride a little bit again, and the guys want to want to do another one. So I think at least one more might be in the the pipeline. But um, for now, yeah, I do want to push this album. You know, it's just came out, and and I've kind of taken what comes to me. It's like I'm not I'm not out there trying to trying to hit it so hard anymore. I guess. Well, I, I think like you said, right, you're you're coming up on 50 and you're realizing that, you know, it, it's not, that's not everything. It's not everything to live in a van for six, eight, nine months of the year and, and try right. to do it, right? Uh, I feel like um, quality over quantity with me anymore, you know, is getting, um, we're just accepting whatever shows, you know, driving 15 hours for one person can kind of, hit you hard you know we did some great yeah. shows and we do some hard ones and it's it's been a learning lesson for sure and a lot of it and um I don't know, i'm gonna keep at it and you know i can look back and say i've got a great catalog of albums and you know with stone cutters and my own victim and and um i don't know i'll keep doing it as long as i can yeah that's what uh, uh that's what chris was saying right like He's what, 55, 57, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, in he's there. older than me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, you know, it's being very uh, picky on the shows that they take. Get right? that. Because it's, yeah. you don't want to go out and play for one person and, and make 30 bucks. You're like, I didn't even make gas money. Right. You know, I've done what I've called the empty room tours. I mean, I've done amazing tours and I've done tours where it's like, man, this is, I can't keep doing it like this. I mean, right. It's some of it can bum you out, but, um, you know, it's all, it's all fun. I mean, it's, it's all about getting, I mean, Chris, Chris doesn't sing and play guitar too. You know, I'm getting up there and like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sound bad up there either. You know, I want to, right. I think I still sound pretty youthful, I hope. But, you know, I'm not trying to cut anybody down. But, you know, I went and saw Megadeth and Dave. You know, Dave did have throat surgery yeah, or cancer. I'm yeah, sorry, cancer. he had throat cancer. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's harder for him to sing. And, you know, you hear guys like Dokken and <laughs> I've watched some YouTube with some of these guys. And, you know, it's I want to know when to say when, too, on that. I don't want to get up there and sound awful. Yeah, well, Doing hopefully, it, so. hopefully you got some people in your circle that are going to say, "Hey, Brian, give it up." You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like I, th I think. I mean, at the moment, people, it feels like they still want it, and that's a bit of the reason why I'm like, "Okay, I'll keep doing it as long as, well, as long as people be there and 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 are hungry for it, and I'm and I'm hungry for it." Yeah, we for you know we for sure do, just as a as a fan of the band, you know, we want to hear more music. We want to see you play out and we want to see you play out to, uh, to full rooms, frankly. Yeah. Like the, right. like the Magbar thing will be a great turnout. And, um, the shows I'm booking, I think are going to be strong. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. I want to so, keep doing it. So, yeah, you know, well. this is, this is album number six. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you, if you have that cover in front of you again, but he put a Roman numeral six, on the album cover i have to point it out to people i see it but being our sixth album i was like man because we we have hidden roman numerals of each album there it is and uh yeah asked him if he'd sneak that in and he did right on 
Well, that's, so. that's cool. That's a, you know, nice, unique thing. I know some, uh, some artists that they always, they'll have this great picture and there's something just a little off somewhere. And like, that's their little signature, you know, without mm -hmm. putting their signature on it, which is, right. you know, super cool. It's nice to have that. Sure. Yeah. So who designed the, the stone cutters logo? That was Tim Lee as well. The guy that did the new album cover, he did the, did the logo. He did a turquoise outline and that yellow outline that's yeah that's on the beanie. And um yeah, I'm stoked on it. Right on. He's, he's um he's fantastic with it. So uh, where, where's he at? I think you said he's out of town, right? Man, he's a, he's a bit of a traveler. He's originally from Wichita, Kansas, but he got his name out in LA or San Francisco or LA. Um probably both um he's pretty much a traveler now um he's i think he was up in um where the stone church is because we talked about that venue stone cutters played the stone church at a fest called stone to death it's kind of funny <laughs> but um he lived in that town brattleboro vermont okay um he was living there and i think he's moving to florida but he's just kind of a traveling he's just traveling tattoo artist he's pretty gotten a pretty good name for himself right on so um yeah so, yeah i'm stoked on that the all the album covers dave pollard has been a huge part of um stone cutters he did our first three album covers and i've still got some stuff of his i'm going to use for for shirts and flyers and i've accumulated a lot i've got a lot of stuff i haven't even used yet with artists that have given me Are you so kidding? you can end up like like Slayer when you decide to hang it up. You hang it up and you can just keep putting merch out for sale. <laughs> you know, I had this, I had this plan. I, I really want to see it through. We've got so much art and and tour posters and stuff. I've shirts and, you know, album covers or whatever I've, I've accumulated. And I want to maybe put a book out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I've been talking to Corey Fusting. He does Doodle Hound. You probably, you might know him local guy but he puts out books of his art and um he we've been talking about putting that together so at the end of the day i'd like to have possibly have a stone cutters book of all our art from over the i mean it's been almost 20 years so yeah. it's a lot of a lot of tour posters and um and you know i i did handle most of that myself you know i got a hold of the artists and worked with each one and so um and i kept all all the work so um different logos and um and just dave did a lot of stuff mainly those three artists did a lot for us um um dave pollard craig horky and then and tim uh Lehigh. and tim lehigh and i should mention jeff gaither's done, has done a lot for us as well he did a lot of posters he did the homer simpson yeah he did the, uh, gg uh... homer didn't he do like the what is it the living uh did the living dead seven inch yeah um he did the new he did a new an eye of the skull for us um that's on johnny our drummer's drum head cool um that's a that's a gay through artwork so uh yeah and we keep it in kind of a little little circle of like three or four that we work with but um I mean, we've done stuff with a lot of other people here and there too yeah but those are kind of the main guys i guess yeah, and they're all tremendous artists, dude. All of them. Yeah, man, you know, I, I really, um, I really pride myself and stone cutters on presentation. You know, I want everything to look. That's really important to me. You know, for everything to look fantastic, and um, yeah, I want to, I want to keep it that way. So oh, yeah, well, yeah, let's keep plugging away at it. Do what you got to do. Right, right. Uh, you, I think you have some other merch uh, that just came out, right? Specifically, the hat, the toboggan. Yeah, yeah we just got the, had the had the toboggan come out, and the new Horky shirt, Craig Horky shirt with um, it's got. I don't know if you could flash that up in um somehow during the video without us here right now, but it's on our website or instagram and facebook and our band camp gets hit a lot it's um stonecutters.bandcamp.com and it's got the new craig Horky 
shirt on there that turned out great. So, um, yeah, he did the new shirts, the new seven inch cover. Um, he's, he's kind of in charge of that fest in Cal Kalamazoo, the cavalcade has been yeah. cavalcade puts on, he plays bass in cavalcade. So Kalamazoo is not a bad drive either. It was about four, four and a half hours, I think. Um, I, th I think so. I think I looked up, I think it was like five, right at five actually. It could be. Yeah. So it's it's not too bad. We're gonna go because we're heading home there for that's be our last show. We're doing like a little weekend. We might extend it, do a little more, but that that's gonna be fun. Yeah, playing fests are always fun to play. Well, for sure, especially you know when you're going to a festival with friends, you know, friends and other bands and and what have you. Yeah, everybody gets to hang out. We played that. Um, Oh man, the Southgate House show revival, Tri State Terror mm -hmm. last year with Wraith and um gosh, Sinistrum played that show. Um, it was a ton of bands, Mound Builders, um, Vincent Crowley, but that was that was a good fest. Um played last year. So You know, I've been to a lot of shows. I've not been to one at the Southgate house yet. Really? Yeah. That's kind of Cincinnati. Cincinnati area. Um, we yes. played Full Terra Assault a couple of times, and we're hoping to maybe do that again right this on. year. Um, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, are you in talks with them about it? Um, I know Joey B a bit, and Tony Clem do it, and um, I mentioned it to them, and they, it's in, hopefully going to happen. Cool. Right on. We shall see. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, I feel like you know. What Belushi Speedballs played there a couple of times. They played a couple of times. They bring a party to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is Shock Narcotic playing this year? I don't know. They haven't announced the lineup for this year yet. So they have played it before, though. Yes. Yeah. They played it last year, which is kind of neat because that's uh, Sean Knight and um, Don Slater. Battlecross guys or something. Uh, so Sean is Child Bite. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Don Slater from Battle, Cro Ugh, Battle Cross. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know who the other couple of guys are. They just got a, a new drummer because their other drummer had some issues. Hmm. They have a total. I haven't figured out who it is yet. Um, I didn't see where Child Bite and, and Snafu, they're doing some of these, um, the, the Pantera shows. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it was Child Bite and uh, Snafu did the same run one did, over the summer last they, year, right? Yeah, they did some previous ones already. And yeah. um, I saw where they're doing more. So it's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, good for them. I know I, we caught that show in Indianapolis and Snafu crushed it. And I, I screwed up and got way too trashed. And by the time Lamb of God came on, I don't remember him getting on stage. <laughs> That's it was, funny. It, yeah, it was terrible. Uh, I'm like, I paid this money to see you and I don't remember none of it. Uh, nasty and Detroit, um, Detroit just has a an amazing scene there. I, I, I guess still, I mean, Snafu, Child Bite, you mentioned Battle Cross, and we did some shows with Against the Grain. Yep. With the Guar Tours. So that's um, the grain, I think, playing some reunion shows lately. Uh, Manic they, Outburst. Remember, they were a good thrash band um, from from Detroit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess the grain did do some reunion shows I saw. Yeah. Or which, show. Which went over. I, I think they did two or three, and they, they went over, sold out like so fast. Um, awesome. Who else? Detroit's got a really solid scene. Like there are so many fantastic musicians there. Uh, just Michigan as a whole, there's some some amazing musicians. Right. We've got the same thing down here though, too. Yeah. Right. Hey, thanks, sir. Yeah, we've got a we've got a fun little scene here. You know, I've been doing the Metal Mondays for like eight years and there's a lot of touring bands, but you have a lot of local bands play it as well. And it stays this this last year was like one of the best years we had. Redivider, it's a great local like death metal. 
um, band I really dig, you know, Blind Scryer. There's got some, more Stoner Doom, and yeah, it's really um, diverse here with the heavy stuff. And yeah. um, I dig well, it. Crop, right? Crop, crop. Lexington yeah. band, yeah. They do well here. Um, I saw where they're they putting together a fest that legalized Lex thing. So that's going to be she's playing that. We share a member with she. Um, Jace, our bass player, also plays guitar and she. Cool. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Blessed Black is on that that uh, legalized Lex too, and I I dig those guys. They're uh, out of Cincinnati kind of a, okay. a stoner like a stoner doom with this 80s uh new wave of british heavy metal like hints throughout it sounds really fucking good killer killer uh, I've, I've heard of them but i haven't checked them out yet yeah they're good uh, uh front the front dude joshua murphy uh goes by murphy he he does that he's in war curse and uh he does. Okay, no war curse. Yeah, so I think they're on Metal Blade, and uh, yeah, their drummer is also plays for Redivide or War Curse's drummer. Oh, right on. And he's in Deteriorate. Hope I'm saying that right. I think it's Deteriorate. Plays drums in that band too. So these drummers are hard to find. So they're in a few bands. I yeah, I just talked to a drummer out of Michigan who. Uh, let's see, Kyle Wagner. He was on. I think he's in like five bands right now. I'm like as a drummer, you have every option in the world. What do you want to play? How many bands? How often? You can literally do whatever you want. No kidding, right? You know, if you have the skill. I'm I'm, I'm I've been I've been playing with the same drummer for like for like thirty years now. Wow. Um, off and on, um, but mostly on. Um, but Johnny, he's played on all the stone cutters. He was in my own victim with me. We played together as kids and he pretty much just wants to do stone cutters, which is good. Um, cause he's a construction worker and he works a lot and it, it can take a lot of your time being in bands. Oh yeah. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're content just getting together. Him and I like got together and wrote most of, um, the last album together and a lot of the albums together. So I don't know. Yeah. I'm lucky to have just one drummer. That's just, I guess he's kind of exclusively with us. So. Yeah. Yeah. You you but, know, that's it. It's always, uh, what is it? You can throw, can, throw a rock in any direction, it. find a guitar player and you can't find a drummer anywhere. Exactly. It's the truth around here. Really? I mean, yeah, a lot of good guitar players around. I'm, I'm kind of sloppy compared to a lot of these shredders, but uh, I don't know. I do my thing, but um, there's some great players. For sure. Yeah, we definitely have some talented musicians around here. You know, I love, yeah. love getting out to shows and seeing, uh, seeing these guys play. Cause it's just, it's mind blowing, you know, crop. Uh, I dig, I always dig seeing crop. I think they're great. Uh bad wires they're really good and they're crazy yeah i uh, like them too yeah we're actually playing texas with them played out of town with them a bit connor he's also in stagecoach inferno that guitar player okay. so um yeah yeah, yeah a lot cool. of members a lot of people share members around here yeah well you, it, i've I've found that with musicians, most musicians can't just stay in one project. They have to have an array of projects to keep them busy. It's like everyone has ADHD. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. That's hilarious. Several jealousy there. No. More no music. Yeah. yeah, it makes it easier to, to get a solid band or a solid bill for a show too, right? Like, oh yeah, I'll do double duty right. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the headliner uh, show release show, Jace, Jace played in both bands. He did double duty that night. Worked yeah. out good. That was the first time I got to see She, and I, I really in, enjoyed their set. Yeah, they got kind of a Sabbathy groove to them. Yeah. 
I tell you what, my, I may have to jump here soon. My dog is getting antsy, and he's um he's he's a bit of a handful. I've got an 80, 80 pound, eighty plus pound pit bull. Okay. So he they don't want to just sit around. He wants my attention. Yeah, yeah. And he hasn't he hasn't been fed today either, so I need to. I've got three of them that are asleep upstairs right now. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're like so my son's asleep on his bed, um, and all the all the dogs are like curled up around him. They're really? Like, yeah, well they get up when he gets up and he like I don't know, he'll get up probably here in about two hours and play video games for seventeen hours, I feel like. Mm-mm. <laughs> We got we got a cat too, and they actually get along pretty well. My dog and cat. Our cat so that rules the good. house. Yeah, yeah, same here. Actually, cat tells big pit bull what's going on. Yeah, get away from so. me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's hilarious. Short and sweet. Uh, but um, yeah, the Magbar show Saturday, man. I hope everybody. I don't know. I think I know it's going to be a good, good turnout. We're gonna. We're gonna kick some butt, and it'll be good. I think um, so too. I think it's gonna be a great show. Uh, I love the fact that it's all ages. Yeah, you know, at, at our age, a lot of people have have kids. Like you know, like I mentioned, my daughter and her boyfriend and his brother all come into the show, which is great. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people bring in their. Uh, you know, I, I I love it when people come up to me and and these kids say, hey, "It's my first show ever." Or my oh, first yeah. concert, and I'm just like that. I don't know something about that is really special. You know, it's like they're not going to forget it. You oh, know, you, you never do, right? And and you want right. to that. I think that's the reason you always want to put your put on the best show you possibly can because that's it's either going to make the kid love it or hate it. Right? Yeah, that's true. So. Preferably yeah, love it. I think they'll they'll usually love it and want to come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what we want, right? We want the kids to keep coming back. Yeah. We know set the headliners shows we played, you know, a lot of kids and headliners and they're all about it and they seem to be the ones getting real excited. Yeah. You know, even I myself included, I kinda hang out and, and watch it and I'll get a little rowdy if, at times, but the kids they're like hungry for it. Well, and that's that's what we need, right? We need people who are going to be hungry for live music, to to keep this this thing that we love, you know, alive. Yeah, for sure. Without it, it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be any fun. All right. Well, let's we're going to start winding down. Brian, you have any final thoughts for the end of this? Um, the come out and see us play if you can. Check out um check out our music on. Spotify, YouTube, however you listen to music. Um, Stonecutters.bandcamp has got all of our merch um, that is available at the moment. And um, we've got a lot of like a lot of cool merch. Like I said, I pride myself on presentation. It's we got some neat stuff. And um, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. So um, yeah, want to want to keep it keep it moving forward. Hell yeah. We're rock and roll. Brian, I appreciate you, uh, you know, sp- spending some time with me today and, uh, I look appreciate forward you, to- Tom. I'll Always see a pleasure. You, uh, I'll see you Saturday. Sweet. Thank you, All my right. man. You're welcome. Have a great day, dude. You too. Take All care. Right, see ya.